So what I want to do is I want to give you a little bit of a rundown on how we may use our markdown to complete our assignments, to complete any of our projects, but then also how it may be useful for you into the future, not just for this course, um, but I think what you'll find is that using our markdown will be a pretty solid way of interacting with some of the recording and analyses and visualizations that you may need to use for a lot of different class. Uh, so I want to spend a little bit of time on helping you navigate some of the intricacies of using it. So I'm going to go ahead and start a screen share here in my RStudio session. Let me pop this up. There we go. So we'll go to RStudio, share this up with you. And you can see nothing too unfamiliar at this point. This is exactly what we would expect to see. This is nothing new, nothing different. It is just our RStudio console as we would expect it to be. Uh, before we've learned a little bit about how to use those R scripts, instead we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to use an R markdown. It's right here. If this is the first time that you're using it, the likelihood that you're going to be asked to install some new packages is pretty great. Um, things like NIDR, things like markdown itself, things that you will have to install. It's fine. Go ahead and install them. It will, uh, it will cause you no harm. You can see though that once you get it installed that we're going to have this dialog box that pops up. It's going to ask some information, things like title, author, none of that is super important right now. The only thing that I do want to point out to you is what could be important is to make sure that our default output format is at HTML. I'll click OK here. Um, before I do that though, you'll notice that there's some stuff over here stuff we don't need to worry about right now. If the time comes that you're interested in learning a little bit more about it, we can get into it later. For now, it's no big deal. So when I click on OK, we're going to see this brand new thing pop up. Let me scroll this down a little bit here so we can view this area a little bit. And here's what we have. The first part is we have this kind of front matter. And this front matter has all that information that we would have previously filled in. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll have title is markdown test. All right, that's great. Uh, name, your name here. I think I'll actually put my name in here for the fun of it. Date, we'll keep as what it is right now. Uh, we can actually take this line out. We'll leave it for now. We do have also the important part, output HTML document. And you'll see that this whole area is wrapped with three hyphens. Three hyphens on the top, three hyphens on the bottom. These have to stay there. If they get deleted or taken out or added to or anything like that, uh, the likelihood that you're going to run into some problems is pretty great. So let's not mess with it. But to make life easy on, on everybody, let's take the rest of this stuff out. So this is what we're left with right now. And when we use our markdown, we essentially just need to think about it as a text editor. That's all it really is. It's nothing fancy, um, but it will just have, give us some nice capabilities to do some, some fun stuff. So let's try this. Let's just type some words. Uh, this might or would be an introduction paragraph, right? So you can see what I have typed here, paragraph, spelling is hard, coding is easier, but here we go. So this would be an introduction paragraph. Let me come down, let me put in two new lines, and let me put in one pound sign or hashtag if you prefer. Same symbol either way. What we have here is a level one heading. Think of chapters, think of subsections. This is what we're gonna use here. So this would very much be a chapter title. So let's call this first try at markdown. And let's put in a level two heading, loading packages. All right, so let's put a little bit more text in here just to kind of explain what's going on. I am going to load the following packages. Great. Now, this is where the magic of our markdown really comes into play because what we can do is we can include our text and our code all in one thing. So what we can do, you'll see this little button here, insert, right? You see it right there, it's right here, right where my cursor is. If I click on insert, I'm going to click and what that's going to do is that's going to put a chunk where I have my cursor. My cursor was in the wrong place, so I'm going to try that one more time. So I'll try that R 
chunk again, and you can see that it pops up an R chunk now. So this R chunk is where we would put any R code in. Um, any, anything that you want to run that's R, this is where we would put it in. So here I can type something like library D plier. Great. Now I can run this within my, my chunk as it is, uh, the way we would run any code chunk. Uh, control enter, we'll run that line. You'll see where it starts to spit stuff out. Maybe it's in your markdown that it spits it out. It's in my console. It's just an option uh, as to where you want it to print out. It's kind of a personal preference thing. So as long as it's returning something for you when you run that chunk, you know you're in good shape. All right, so let's work through a few more things here. Uh, instead of just, just keeping this into one line, uh, one chunk here, we can keep writing in this chunk how we would anything else. So if we are wanting to maybe uh, do print out a little message or to, uh, let's see, what else what could we do here? We could maybe just load another library in. Let's, uh, we're going to need ROI eventually. Let's uh, go ahead and and bring that one in as well. So you can see, again, we have some messages that print out with it. So it's a code chunk. If you're on a Windows machine, Control-Alt-I will put in a new code chunk. If you are on a Mac, it is also Control-Alt-I to put in a code chunk. Uh, it's one of those kind of rare Mac things, I think, where you don't need to use the command, I don't believe. Uh, it's one I always have to look at, though, before I know. Either way, we'll get the general or the general code chunk that we need if we want to insert it with a button or a keyboard shortcut. Either way. So let's go ahead and put in um, some more stuff. And here is where we may want to actually start doing something interesting. So let's put in a new title or a new chapter title, a new level one heading. Let's call this something interesting. Very original, super awesome. That's great. But here, we may actually want to do something that we could deem useful to us. So uh, let's type a little exposition here. Here, I am going to create a linear model. Great. Again, I'll control Alt I to bring in a new code chunk uh, to keep these, this, all these chunks nice and separated. And let's just try this. Let's call this test model and lm and let's try the old standard here nothing fancy miles per gallon is a function of weight data equals mt cars that's all data that's already built into r so we don't need to do anything fancy there we can run that code chunk and you can see that when i ran this that popped up in my global environment over here you can see this thing called test model right that's great that's exactly where we want that means that we know that our code ran we can also do summary test model here and what do you know it comes out and it pops in our console fantastic so that's all well and good but you may be wondering well what does this really do for me that something else wouldn't do well this is where uh, the power of R markdown really comes into play so I'm going to press on my keyboard control shift K if you're on a Mac it's command shift K for knit there's also this handy little knit button right up there all right, so here's a lot of stuff. I'm just going to call this test markdown. I'm going to save this. You're going to see that it runs, and then what happens? Well, great. It's going to pop up this new thing. We have a lot of nasty kind of stuff here. We're going to worry about that in a little bit. That's stuff that detracts from what we're doing. But you can see that everything that we have done comes out in the same document. So that little bit of introductory introduction paragraph there, our level headings, and then more importantly, our code and our output. When you use our markdown, it enables you to have everything all in one place. Your exposition, your code, your output, your visualizations, and anything else you need to put in there. Because this is working as reproducibly uh, as you possibly can at this point, you want all of these things in the same place. And this helps to ensure that you can communicate your results and share your results a lot easier than what you would. Let's try one more thing, though, just kind of for the fun of it and the sake of it. Um, you can do something like this. If we click into this markdown chunk, right, see right here, this R, if we put a comma after that, comma, let's do warning equals false, 
message equals false, we may see something kind of helpful happen here. So let's take a look and see what happens when we renet this. We don't have to save this file name again. We know what it is. And what do we know? Well, great. All of that warning and message information that was printed out in our document the first time is now gone. By having warning equals false and message equals false, uh, we have taken all of that kind of ugly stuff out of there. Let's maybe tidy up one more thing. You can see here that in our output, we have this list of, uh, of pound signs. Again, may not be the most helpful thing. Uh, let's, let's do a little something to beautify this. So if we come into this code chunk right here, right, and say comment equals this, an empty quote, Let's see what we will get out of this. Uh, all of those things are now gone. So by turning on that common equals false, what we effectively did was to uh, take out all of those commenting lines. Because of the way this prints out, we don't need to know that it's a comment. We know the difference here between code and output. So we don't need that extra information uh, at all. Now, you may be wondering what is going to happen if you have, for instance, a lot of code chunks. Do you have to set, set these things all together? Well, not necessarily. You'll notice, uh, if you remember back to the start of this, one thing that we did was we deleted all of the extra information out of here. But let's do something real quick. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, cobbling from something else. So if we open up a new R markdown, and we're not gonna worry about saving this, but what we are gonna use is this. See here, this is this R setup chunk include equals false which means that it won't be printing out anything but here this knit our option chunk set is the critical piece that we're going to take with us so if we copy this let's go ahead and take this out and we're going to put it right towards the front right since this is a setup chunk this is one of the first things that we're going to do here we have echo echo means to echo out our code so if something is echoed it is repeated back so if your echo is equal to true, that means it's going to show your code, whatever you have put, it will echo it back out into your knitted document. But let's uh, go ahead and take this warning equals false and message equals false and put it up into this option set, All right? And now let's also do with this with our comment, comment equals empty. And let's take this out of here, All right? We'll take each one of these out. And we'll take this out of here, and we'll try this one more time to see what may happen. Hopefully, if all goes according to plan, our output won't have changed any at all. And what do you know? It doesn't. The same thing comes up. So this is great. So this is the kind of thing that we want. And if we open up our, uh, our Explorer, whatever it is, and we start looking into where this may have been. I honestly have no idea where I put this anymore, probably somewhere in documents, I would hope, but it's hard saying what I've done anymore. And we see here that we have this test markdown. So wherever I save that file is where it's also going to knit that HTML file. So if I click on that, perfect. We get exactly what we would expect to see. This is an HTML file that opens up in any browser that you may want to use and we have exactly what we want. So for all of your homework, this is what you're gonna be turning in, this knitted markdown document. It's the HTML file. I don't need the, the R&D, although you're always welcome to turn it, in, uh, turn it in along with the HTML file. The HTML file is ultimately what I want. Now what this is going to do is this is going to take a little bit of practice to make sure that, you all, that you're getting this. Um, I do expect some errors to happen. So when you are doing this, remember that your R Markdown script is a new session every single time. So whatever you may have in your local environment, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work in your Markdown when it gets knitted. So if you've installed and loaded packages, you're gonna to have to do that in your Markdown, except for the installation. That gets into a little bit of a different issue. So don't ever put an install.packages into a Markdown document bad things can happen. You have to do a lot of extra work to even get that to work or how you would expect it to work. So don't put that in there. But in terms of loading a library, or I'm sorry, a package, that is something that you will have to do um, in your markdown document. Any other code, any other object creation, that all has to be done in your markdown document for it to knit successfully. Again, it'll take a little practice, take a little bit of time, uh, but with that time, you will eventually get it and it will be 
a kind of a second nature to you, and it will be hard to go back to working in the typical manner, uh, producing results, creating tables in Excel or visualizations in Excel, copying and pasting those over to Word, working on formatting, working on Word formatting, and doing all of that uh, kind of hasslesome stuff that comes along with that kind of very traditional way of sharing documents. It will take time, and it will be fought uh, with a little bit of frustration, but it will become second nature, and you'll see the value in it very quickly.